Okay guys, uh, it's uh, Michael here and I'm doing another um, high ISO noise um, comparison this time for um, full frame versus um, crop or DX uh, what I'm using is a Nikon D7100 on the left and a Nikon D800E on the right um, I'm using all exact same um, ISO aperture and the lens focal length will I change that um, to to suit the, the crop sensor so I've got 35 millimeter on the crop and I've got 50 millimeter on the full frame both the same lens actually um, 24 to 85 millimeter via Nikon lens, um, a very, very good lens. Um, okay, so let's take a look at these two. Um, so what we have here is I've turned all the settings down to zero in Lightroom, um, synchronized both, um, all the settings were off on the camera for any noise reduction and things like that. So this is just purely the raw image out of camera. So let's have a look. Um, as you can see, um, just looking at them like this, there is very little between it. I wouldn't be worried too much about this uh, discoloration here. That could be um, due to the focal length of the lens changing. Um, could be due to um, the light coming over my shoulder in the room. Um, but anyway, both of them were shot at f4.5, 1 60th of a second, and ISO 6400. So, a quick look, let's have a look at the detail in this button. Um, okay, very similar, very, very similar. Um, it probably looks a little bit better, I would say, on the 7100. Also, the detail in this box, which is like a a textured finish on this box looks a little bit clearer on the D7100 although that could be a focus issue um, so let's not get too excited about that very very similar I would say equal there let's have a look at this box um, looking at the box again texture and detail are just about the same I would give the edge actually to the D7100 um, it looks a little bit better. You can see the noise um, when you get into this darker area. The noise is a little bit better on the D800. Not significantly. It's not like a huge jump. Um, it's a little bit better here. Um, as, um, it starts to lose a bit on the D7100, but not much. Not much at all. When you're considering that to buy both these cameras today on the second hand market you probably get a D800 for around I don't know probably around 1700 Australian dollars and you'd get a D7100 for around $500 so you could buy three D7100s for the price of one D800 and you can see there's not a lot um, difference there Okay, just going through the picture, this is on crop, let's have a look at this bottle of Fahrenheit perfume here, and you can see the shadows in the background, which is a good, good thing to be looking at. Um, again, there's a little bit of an advantage with the D800, but I mean, I'm really saying a little bit, and it's just a tiny bit, there's hardly anything in it. Really, the grain and everything is the same on both. Um, I would not give a big advantage to either one. I would give it an equal ranking. Um, looking at the colours and everything, uh, they say that you'll lose colour, colour tonality, and things like that when you go into the high ISO. And 6400, I would consider a high ISO. Some people may not, but I do. Um, and you can see the colours are exactly the same, absolutely the same. There's no advantage, um, I would say, going full frame with um, if you're worried about high ISOs. Um, in fact, I would say the image is a little bit sharper with 
the D7100. Why that is, is probably because the pixel density is a little bit more intense. Um, I believe that if um, you used the D7100 24 megapixel sensor on a full frame camera, it would equate to around 50 megapixels. So it's probably a little bit sharper for those reasons. Okay, zoom back out, and you can see in the long shot, there's really nothing in it at all. So that's just a quick comparison, um, high ISO and noise. Um, if you were curious and you're saying, a lot of people are saying you're getting such better performance with the full frame sensor, well, it surprises me, but I would say not. <laughs> um, definitely not. Um, not with these cameras anyway. This is a high megapixel um, full frame sensor. Let's not forget that. It would be interesting. I don't have a low um, megapixel full frame camera, so it's um, I can't say. Like if I had a D600 compared to the D7100, would that make a difference? Possibly. Possibly it might make the difference. Um, you might get much better low light performance with the full frame then. But I'm saying if you're comparing a high megapixel such as D800, D810 um, to a crop sensor camera, there's not going to be any advantage with the noise um, going that way. Yeah, it's very interesting. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and um, might have shed some light for you. It certainly enlightened me a little bit. Um, I am a little bit surprised. I would have expected the D800 to definitely outperform the D7100 for high ISO noise performance, but it actually didn't. It didn't do anything at all, really. So, that's how it goes. Um, what are the implications of this? Well, I'm thinking for myself as a photographer who might do weddings, portraits, um, night shots at events, things like that. Um, I would not be um, grabbing the D800 anymore in anticipation that I'm going to be using high ISOs and getting better pictures. No, I would definitely stick with the D7100 where I can open up the uh, aperture more if I have a fast lens and get, um, you know, better low light performance in the same situation um, because I'm actually able to turn down the ISO with the higher aperture which is an interesting um, scenario which is probably why people are going for things like the Fuji X-T2 um, I can see the argument for that anyway I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have please like and subscribe and I'll try and put up more little interesting bits like this and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.